Hey guys, Rishan here, and today is going to be a Virago solo guide for the week of the end. So, Virago is a boss that's actually quite fun, but historically it's been pretty challenging in solo, and also not really that popular in group because of competitive drops, and it's hard to get people because Virago is a boss of patience and mechanics, not just flat out damage. So, I will say, like, uh, Necromancy has made this boss a lot easier, mostly because of the hit chance change, though, I would say, because it's not as demanding to, like, bring a Stasis Warhammer or Quake and Guthix staff at the same time. Um, I will also say that the reality of this game is that the better gear you have, the more skill there, like, the more skill you, like, you're pretty much better at the game. A lot of people think, like, oh, I can't do a boss, I must suck, but, like, a lot of it just comes down to not having the, the gear. As long as you have, like, the base gear, like, you know... Full turn 85, uh, and uh, honestly, I would even say that the Omni Guard is very important just for accuracy's sake. Uh, any ring, you know, just like the Zuck Cape and Jenny of Humans, the the the, the Grimoire is not that important. Um, and like a Turtling Force Switch with like the best overload you have, you can probably do this boss. I, and I, I will say again, the higher level your Necromancy, the easier time you're gonna have because of accuracy reasons. Um, sorry, my microphone might be too close. Um, what we call it? So. Virago's also not that good GP per hour. I think if you do four kills an hour, he's only like 40 mil an hour right now. So if you do, you know, uh, five kills an hour, he's like five, 50 mil. I will say, I think it's more like 56 mil if you turn off your Gamora and put it on at proper time. So it's not bad. Uh, I think when they make a tier 90 or tier 92 set effect for Tectonic, I think the price will be better. So be at least maybe 80 mil. So that's nice. Um, I will also say that, so, uh, like, I, I will get to the gear, so you can skip ahead to the timestamp if you want to see the gear. But I want to say all these notes, okay? Uh, solo is also more advantageous currently because you don't lose out on the Vitalis drop that you get, and people that have Vitalis typically don't go back to Virago, so you can't, like, get a drop from them. So, doing solo is basically so you don't lose a drop, and unless they ever make it so Virago just has double HP, it requires double damage to push him back and stuff like that, on, like, part 5... Uh, in like a team setting and everyone gets their own loot. I yeah, I don't I don't know like game, doing group is just usually kind of bad because You don't get that much money at all. It's really bad GP hour uh, I also say that the invoke bones codex is very important um, More so if you're lesser geared than me uh, it really helps on part three and especially part five because as there's a constant tug of war battle if you're like messing up or something or you don't have quite the damage because he gets stronger as you push him back. This codex helps over time make it easier to push him back. So really, really strong codex for this boss. Again, people like this boss this codex has been buffed a lot. It lasts a whole minute and reduces a lot of armor now. Oh my god, that's loud. Um and it, it's just like it's there's not many bosses where it can be used. So it's actually very good for this boss. I'll show you how to use it. Um The not important thing is the double escape codex. I will have to put this in my bar, good thing I'm talking about this, is the double escape codex allows you to double escape on part 5, which is very important. I will also say that the dive ability is also very important to have for the purposes of clearing bleeds on like part 2 uh, specifically. Um, which my god. Oh yeah, and if you want to know like where to get any of these things, just use the in-game wiki search function. Some people go, oh, why aren't you saying where to get it? Well, just use the wiki search function, you know? Um, I, I am using the Anchor more, but I will say that I think the full book is better because of the raw damage it gives. And it's not like when you procs it, it does a damage like on a reflect or something. It is more dangerous to take though. So you can take that if you want. But I'm just using Anchor more for the sake of it. I'll be honest, I think Grimoire doesn't help Necromancy too much, but it's pretty nice. Um, what should we call it? Oh, and yeah, don't take books like Wen book or Jazz book. Because if they proc on Reflect, yeah, you're going to take a lot of damage. And in Part 5, it's going to really screw over the kill. So don't do that. Um, also, yeah, the Reaver Ring reduces your accuracy, but it gives you more crit chance. I'm not sure if this is actually better at Virago or not. Because you're losing literally flat 5% damage. And I'm not, like, Stasis Warhammering. Warhammering, So, yeah, maybe they'll make a Necromancy Ring soon. So you won't have to use Reaver Ring. But, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's actually better or not, but I'm going to be using it for the sake of the video. If you don't have this ring, it's that big deal. Just bring, like, an Asylum Surgery Ring or something. Um, I will also say we will be using a Hellhound as well. And an Ice Nihil is actually better if you know what you're doing. 
because of the 5% accuracy, which is really, really good at this boss. But for learning purposes, I would always say take a Hellhound because Hellhound saves you so much. It's like not even funny. Hellhound's like the strongest. Like, I, I would honestly say Hellhound is the most broken familiar in the game. Like, flat out. It's used for everything. It's used from low end, high end. People use that 2,000, 20,000 rage Zamorak. Sure, they bring a Calgary Demon, but it's the Hellhound that helps them get past that uh, last phase on Zamorak where he um, sends that big 100k hit when they stall and stuff. Like, the Hellhound is just broken. So, whenever you're learning a boss, just take the Hellhound. And if you want a relaxed experience, just take the Hellhound. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I think, that, like, the past two weeks, I've been quite experienced. I can probably take a Nihil, honestly. Because I don't eat food. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, another thing is having 2x large Malatops in your pen. That's quite a high requirement in farming. I think it's 117 farming. That's not really that required. As long as you have, like, turning, turning four on your Deathborn top, you're probably fine. I don't really use it that much, so honestly, it's not that important. I would just say the Turtling 4 top switch is very nice, so I'll at least take that. Uh, Zemergo's Dex is also very important, though. Uh, just kill 100 Vorkath in normal hard mode, and you'll get this. It helps your barricade duration as well. Um, the Aura we'll be using, it isn't that big of a deal. Uh, Aegis can be okay if you want to take, you know, don't, if you want to take less damage, but it doesn't really help too much. Uh, I would say it's Premium Vigory, Inspiration, or Madra are better. I would take Madra because I already have Archaeology Relics, like the 10% Adrenaline after ult. If you are lacking those Adrenaline Auras, such as like Supreme Invigory, not, it's not Supreme Invigory. Conversation, conversion, conversion of Energy, it's, it's something like that, where you save 10% Adrenaline ult. You really uh, want to probably just take Supreme Invigory, but I'm going to use Madra because it helps them push back. And, I'll, oh, another thing is Disruption Shield is really broken in per 5 because it prevents pushback. So, you can just spam this a lot. And Disruption Shield is one of the most bro It's honestly probably top 3 most broken abilities in the game. So, yeah, it, it's just a lossless ability. So, definitely recommend getting this before we're doing this because it, it will make your life a lot easier. I will say, I didn't really use it too much when I was doing my first solos. So, you can probably get by it. But if you are like, not that experienced, but are good at using Disruption Shield, it's really nice. Okay. Smart Cloud is also nice, but not really needed. It's You only use it on part 5, and I'm not sure if it really does too much, to be honest. Because, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it does too much. Um, so, we'll finally talk about gear now. Sorry. I, I just have a lot of notes to talk about, because Rago's kind of an important boss to talk about with notes. And, whatchamacallit. There, I was just making sure everything's going fine. So, full tier 95, raise your gear, relentless 5, crackling 4, biting 4 mobile, and uh, it, what, do you, what do you call it? What do you even call it? Devoted 4, inspiration 4, invigorating 4, undead slayer. Undead slayer is not important, it's just from, you know, raise your and forecast. Uh, I, again, it's very important to have some form of biting, some form of mobile. Relentless 4, crackling 3 can do fine, and it's very important to have invigorating and, and, and uh, what do you call it? Inspiration. So, it's called Inspiration, right? No, sorry. Impatient 4. Uh, another thing is Zuck Cape. Very important for Death Skulls. Uh, so, definitely just use Zuck Kill. It's not honestly that hard. It's just a normal mode kill. Essence of Finality with Death uh, death Grass, Death Guard in it. Uh, again, Reaver Ring can be a substitute with like literally any other ring. It doesn't really matter too much. You can honestly just probably wear a Luck of the Wards and not really notice a difference, honestly. Summer Ghost Next is very important for inventory uh, space and having a stronger barricade. And you buy more uh, flush runes. Tier 95 weapons, you can see Aftershock 4, Eclum 2, Precise 6, um, Ruthless 1. I, I will say that the Aftershock can also potentially be bad sometimes. So if you only have like Precise 6, Eclum 4 or something, that will do fine as well. Again, best book is probably full book, but I'm using Grimoire just because... You probably don't want to take a full book when you're learning. Praise of Wand is just a, apply Smoke Cloud. If you don't want to apply Smoke Cloud, which again, I don't think it's not that big of a deal, don't worry about it. Because to apply Smoke Cloud, you need uh, Ingenuity of Humans. So if you don't have this, like with Ingenuity of Humans and don't want to apply Smoke Cloud, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, a Restore is only needed if you like forget to take Penance Powder or something or it runs out in the middle of the kill. I kind of just take it because I don't really eat food anyway. Because we'll be using penance powder anyway. I need to drink, take a sip of coffee, apparently. Gosh, guys. Uh, I take three rock tails because this, this is the room for the three weapon pieces. And 
it's before part five, so it's not really adrenaline intensive. So it's just cheap food to eat. You can also eat it before you start the kill. Power versus vitality is actually quite nice. So whenever you feel like you're in a pickle, you just drink this. It helps a lot. Like, oh my god, I don't have any defensives or something, and I'm just panicking. Just drink it. Uh, rune pouches, you can see the runes in, in them each. I'll scroll on each one. You can see I'm running out of body runes, so I think I'll be fine this skull. Uh, Ring of Death. Um, this is only if, like, something super clutch is happening at the end of the kill and, like, you're, like, running out of food and you barely get the kill. Uh, I'm not sure if the bleed actually applies pushback or not that it does to you. Um, this kill, this ring has saved me, I think, like, one, at least one kill at Zemmergold and Warcraft because I messed up really doing something stupid and greedy. So, it's a nice ring if you can remember to swap to it when, like, you have no sign and stuff. So, that's just that. Um... I've not used a spear shield here, but it can be nice if, like, Virag was reflecting and you just put it on, like, you know, cast anticipation and, like, residence and preparation or something. And it just, it just makes you take less damage with Pendant's Powder. Very broken with Pendant's Powder. One of the most, again, top three bro most broken items in the game. I don't really use it, though, but again, if you have lesser gear, this will probably help you actually get the kill and not, like, run out of food. Uh, Necromancer, Death Warden, Rope Top with Turling 4 and Bulwark 4. Turling 4 is more most important. Bulwark, Bulwark 4 isn't that important because I kind of barely use it. Maybe I'll try to use it this time. Excalibur is very good for the healing, obviously. And Elder, Elder Overload Salve with Adrenaline Renewal Flask and a Expensive Spices for more healing and Vulnerability Bombs and a Brew in case I need to uh, eat and heal at the same time. So let's go to War's Retreat and then let's get ready to go to the kill. So... So what do we want to do? Well, we want to light our Lanthodime sticks for free overloads. And Fortitude, Bonfire, wait a little bit, click, go to Anachronia to get your Ooglog Spring buff. If you don't have this, you need to do some quests and go to go to Ooglog, actually, and get a Spring buff. It's the Thermal Bath treatment. Oh, God. We're, we're Bonfired. And... We can summon our Hellhound. Very important to have runes for Prism of Restoration. If I... So, also, pens, power pens. Because this Prism will heal the Hellhound so you don't need scrolls, which is very really important. So, again, I reckon just do quests, guys, okay? Like, I, I think it's ridiculous when people say, Can you make less quest requirements? No, because quests are a core part of RuneScape, okay? Um, <laughs> so... You can also just use the War of Retreat portal to get to Virago, but to get to Virago, it's pretty simple. You just go to Faldor and go north. Um, oh, I will say, one one cool trick you could do, if you want to, like, min-max the uh, hell, is put on Fortitude, eat a Rocktail, load back the preset, and then just go to Faldor, and you'll take you'll just have more HP for the, the big uh, entry. So, in case you've never been to Virago, this is how you get to Virago, if you like, need a kill or something. Uninstanced encounter... Rock. No one ever fight. This is, the, I think, the least popular boss in the game, which is really sad to me. He's a really fun boss. I was doing, I've been doing recently just for fun. He's really fun. I really enjoy him. I hope I, ke I might keep buying his correct on this account because I'll be frank. I've only done this on my other account, so I'm gonna hope everything's correct. Uh, and again, Death Ward, very the small, and the ten percent drain after old relic from Anachronia. Um. Our key binds, we want to change this. Yep, Magic Purr and Ruination. Challenge Rago, we fight. Just wait a little bit. I need to change my volume a little bit. And we're, we're usually just wait. Just leave that prayer on. As you fall, get ready to click, uh, uh, uh sorry, activate Korsusuke, uh, Life Transfer, Darkness, put on your prayer command. Uh, you could drink your overload, but it's not a big deal. Oh, we won't cast a Disruption Shield right now, actually. Yeah, I should have cast a Disruption Shield when I got down. I forgot. You just climb these walls. It's pretty easy. And you surge. Do, do, do. You can eat the Rock Tail. It doesn't really matter. I lost my run energy for some reason because Rago doesn't like me, guys. So, drink your overload. Command your skeleton. DPS Rago. And, yeah, you can pretty much just leave Magic Purr if you want and just attack him. You could soul split flick if you want, but like, yeah, it's not that important. So, 
my things are just so screwed up. I mean, honestly, you just keep attacking, like, bloat him. Tier 90 special. Virginia of Humans. Oh, oh, I already cast that special. Oh, yeah, you just keep hitting him, honestly. Like, yeah, you're taking bomb damage. I mean, you can just eat the food. It doesn't really matter, because it's not like you really eat food anyway. If you want to, you can also just cast the Devotion here. Like, maybe I should have cast it before. You'd probably eat less food. So he's almost dead, and you can climb him now. You need an inventory space to climb him. When we uh, fall off, you want to cast Invoke Death here. Invoke Death and Tier 90 special him. And he's dead. And he's going to start jumping around. And you kind of just wait. Okay. We don't have a Grimor. Oh, we should put a Grimor on for that phrase one, but you know, we kind of forgot. That's okay. So when you fall down, I'm going to summon my, my spirit and my skeleton just for the healing. And when he comes down, I'm going to bloat him. We're going to target cycle, bloat, escape. Target cycle, bloat, escape. Oop, I did a roll. I did fine. Okay, so you want to escape it at a certain tick. Freedom the second bleed. Wait a second. He does the melee. Magic prayer. You escape again. Wait for this. And then wait. You can dive back. And then this one is the one you want to also escape. Also, I hugged the wall. That's fine, though. Ugh, fix yourself. You also want to cast Barricade here. I bloated him, which is kind of a mistake because when you, when you, uh, when you bloat him, uh, the the reflect will make you take damage. So make sure you're not to blow blow him before he does reflect. And yeah, when, if, as long as you're Barricade, you're fine. And he's gonna send bombs. And so when he sends the bomb, he starts standing still. And you put Matt back Magic Bear and just keep hitting him at this point. And you want to just get his HP down. Really, he's gonna start doing bleeds in a second. And we can cast Escape. Go melee, melee. Like, it, no, take note of when I'm casting my escape. Like, watch, he's gonna bleed, and then like at a certain tick, you need to cast escape or your um, dive ability. Also, cast debilitate or reflect. I'm making this so complicated where it doesn't need to. Be. You can just cast like debilitate and you take like zero damage. There's no prayer fucking required really. So when he when he's doing this. You just want to click them a lot. This is the fun part. Because this is where like, you can go, Woo! I could just... Sorry, it's loud. Like, I love bosses like this. It's like, this is where you just get your... You eat your sandwiches. <laughs> that you made. Um, our familiar is dying. So we're going to cast Prism Restoration during this as well. So, when Rago finishes, we want to just DPS him a lot. And to make sure we phase him, I'm just going to Death Skulls Tier 90 and Tier 95 special him. Because I really just don't care. I don't know the exact damage you need to deal. So, tier uh, Death Skull, tier 90, tier 95, and we're just going to volley him in a second. Auto, and he should be dead. And yeah, he has to invoke death, auto him. He's going to bomb us in a second, which is fine. And you can resonance this as you blend the phase if you want. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, it's not that important. If you take damage, don't eat. Like, there's no reason to eat so much. I only ate in phase 1, honestly, for inventory space. So this is the important DPS phase, so we want to put our Gamora on. So summon all, life transfer, command your ghosts, invoke Lord of Bones, and we're going to wait a little bit here. Um, for the sake of, I mean, you can recast Darkness if you want, just because I don't, I'm going to, yeah. So command your skeleton, and then we're going to, uh, what we call it, cast, what is it called, the Elder Special, Split Soul. Yeah, you just keep attacking him at this point, and make sure you bloat him, and you're just going to do a lot of damage to him, okay? And you want to get that Death Skulls off, and you're going to take less damage at this point, but that's fine. Click all these red bombs three times, you'll take some damage, it's not a big deal though. And one thing we're going to want to do here is have Barricade, so get ready to cast Barricade. Like right now, you, like you don't even, like, I'm, I'm going to put my Trolling Forward and just cast Barricade, and just start attacking one... Two and then three, he's gonna reflect. It's not a big deal because if when he reflects, it's only going to you and you're barricaded, so you won't even take damage. So if you want to, you can cast devotion here, but like you'll heal the full anyway. And he's gonna do the end again, and I just tier 90 special him. He's running. We're gonna command our skeleton in a second and just shred him up. And we didn't cast one thing we forgot to do is cast invoke death, but that's fine. And you shouldn't need to click on these anymore. If your damage is lower than mine, um, you can cast Invoke Death here. 
If your damage is lower than mine, you can just do this again. Just click on the red bombs and just devotion or something. I think I'm not sure if devotion works, but if devotion, devotion doesn't work, just per, do a power burst of vitality or something. Uh, we're gonna drink our restore because we're running out of perk. We're not really taking that much damage. So lots of waiting right now. We. I like to always go on this spot too. This is the spot I went in part two. It's this little like, I don't know, house, stone. And you just stay here, and then he falls, just relax, oh, there's the waterfall, and you just click. Like, like people surge and die, I'm like, how? And we're gonna summon our, summon our ghost and skeleton for damage. Like, you know, just save, we're at Iron Man today. And I'm gonna bloat him, attack, and you can just wait, and then after two attacks, you just spam click devotion, and you're absolutely fine. He's gonna do the end soon, but you wanna make sure you damage him. Again, you don't wanna reset his HP. Um, you could reset his HP for the purpose of... Like, you always have to make sure you're inside this little mechanic. I'm not really I'm worried about doing too much damage. Um, you could just keep the over, like, doing a lot of damage from because one thing you can do with Rago is, even though it's, like, you know, time-gated, if you do more damage, you'll actually get more experience. So, if you're interested in, you know, Necromancy XP, you can train Necromancy while doing this boss. You'll get an extra 8k XP a phase or something. And he's gonna do his little bombs. Oh my gosh, I, my, my frames went to zero. So we, we can wait, cast barricade, and start shredding him up. And you just gotta stand here, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't know why I even have soul spot on. Red bomb doesn't really matter. Just AFK. He's gonna do reflect in a second. You can cast like, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't really matter too much, like, ooh, he hit me. And like, if you want, you can cast like, you can even play your spear shield to save runes or something. And cast resonance, then reflect. And there you go, and wow. Um, we're doing quite a lot of damage to him. I'm, I'm kind of surprised how much damage we're doing. And you, um, we can't summon our ghost because we're in combat with him. So, mage prayer, summon ghost. Summon your, uh, it's spam devotion after two summons. And yeah, just make sure that you prism occasionally to make sure your hellhound doesn't die. You can also take an extra hellhound pouch in case you forget about your hellhound. Um, I honestly feel like I'm doing too much damage for Rago, so I'm probably going to have to kill him, like as in phase him, which is fine. So yeah, we're gonna phase him here because that was a, this is too much damage, and I don't want something stupid to happen. Recovery overload. Um, at this point, too, you could put on your Gamora just so you're ready for the next phase, so you don't forget, which would kind of be bad, you know. When does he phase? Oh, I think he's like 17k. I was probably honestly fine. I thought he, like, phases, like, way sooner. Um, this barricade probably wants to be a regular barricade for the purpose of, like, having it for next phase, but, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares? We're just doing the totally. I Oh, I actually don't have the Malatops in my player on farm. So, yeah, you could easily do this without Malatops, by the way. So... I lied. Yeah, I, I don't have Malatops, so you're fine. Like, this isn't even with Malatops perk, so yeah, that's not even required. Um, Devotion here is kind of questionable, but whatever. And um, just don't get below 17k, I believe. Are we all buffed? I think we are. So you want to cast Invoke Death here, and he'll die in one auto. Just spam Soul Sap or something. And he's dead. So, magic prayer on, Gamora's on, you drop the weapon piece, you want to pick it up and form it before next phase. And we're getting ready to activate our Excalibur, we're just waiting for us to fall down. So as we fall down, summon all, life transfer, ghost, invoke bones, command skeleton, and target cycle smoke cloud boom bomb, tier 95 special, tier 90 special. And I like to go melee with him, actually, not actually, because I think his melee can miss. I'm not actually quite sure about that, but I swear I can miss. Um, you also uh, debilitate with turtling here for less pushback, which is kind of nice. And you just kind of keep hitting him. And he's going to reflect after three hits, by the way. So right now he's going to reflect, which is fine. Oh, it's actually five hits, I believe. You know, I'll clarify then. I, I believe it's five hits, so I'm actually lying. I barricaded. He's channeling. That's fine. Invoke Lord of Bones again. Do, 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 and just attack. Get ready to uh, cast up uh, backslide a second. And you want to, uh, when he does the bleed again, it's the same thing. You want to do it at the same tick. We're going to bloat him. 
block back. And then we can debilitate him again with the turtling. Commander Skeleton. Tier 90 special. Uh, Death Skull. Tier 95 special. N needle. I, again, I'm not sure if it's actually good to go in melee time, but I kind of do it, so whatever. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, you're supposed to cast disruption shield here, I forgot. I said it's so good, but I don't even do it. I'm crazy. Ooh, I just debilitated myself. Oh, don't worry. So we need to resummon our guys. Eh, I, my Excalibur thing's wrong. Okay, it pisses me off. So we're gonna cast a backslide in a second here. Backslide. Backslide again. And then we can cast Barricade in a second. He should be dead uh, as soon as we cast this Barricade. And we barricaded. Yeah, so he's gonna die. We don't have on him, by the way. And you can quit. I don't have my Luck of Dwarves, but that's fine. Yeah, he's just dead like that. Um, you could cast um, Living Death and stuff, I, which I typically do. But to be honest, when I'm explaining things, it's kind of like harder to get like into this whole, whole DPS mode. That's kind of like a good... This is like a good way, if you don't have the damage, a good way to do it slowly, you know? Because like what you could do like living death and like zero brain it. But um yeah, if you don't have the best gear, you, you wanna do that those debilitates with a turtling forth to really prevent the pushback. And you really want to uh cast that barricade for the less pushback. I did not have the mouth top spark. So the only thing I had was Zermergo's Nexus and Turtling Fort. I did not need the mouth top spark. It's not even needed. So and vice versa. You don't even necessarily need a turtling four switch. You could just use your Malatops perk with a Zermogles Nexus, and you would have the same result. Um, I will say the one thing that you wouldn't have if you did either or is the turtling, the, what do you call it? Bulwark 4. Bulwark 4 is really strong and because it's even increased duration because of, of the shield level we have. We have a level 75 shield with Bone Shield. So Bulwark 4 is actually very strong with Necromancy and, well, actually any style. It's because your debility lasts so long and it prevents that pushback. Um, another thing that prevents pushback, according to the wiki, is uh, Mage Prayer Devotion. But again, as long as you do like debilitate and uh, uh, barricade, you should be fine. I, and I, I, there are tricks to this where, like for instance, he does reflect and you stay in the back, wait for a bomb, then you like dive in, and then like they all hit you at the one, like the two bombs, and if he melees, all hits you at once. You can do that. It's not needed. I, I, I'm aware of that trick, but it's not needed to. A complete Virago. I, again, I try to make this as simple as possible. And again, um, one thing I should have done was I, I didn't even drink my Vitality Potion. One thing I should have done during this kill is during one of the Reflects, I should have drank my Vitality Potion and casted Life Transfer so that my summons didn't die. Because I don't re, re them. So I think I could have did, I honestly, had probably a 20 second pass for kill. So my bad there. Um, yeah, what he's defeated, you can leave from here, but at that point, you can just teleport out anyway. Uh, really fun boss. I mean, how much was that one kill? Uh, again, it, it's actually very consistent money. Even though he's at the best money per hour, he's actually quite consistent money. Like, look at that. Just, for, just from one kill. So, he's pretty good money. Again, Sari's pretty good money, too. But, yeah, Virago's pretty solid. He's very, very fun. I love this boss. Um, did I even have Mega Boron, guys? Or did I turn it off? Did I even have, did, did I even have Mega Boron? I might have actually not even had Mega Boron, guys. No, I, I turned it off. I turned it off. It was actually on. I turned it on for part three, I think. And then I turned it off. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, you don't need more, guys, right? <laughs> um, so, there, oh, there you go. <laughs> you don't need this shit. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, that's honestly pretty much it. Um, I'm going to do the other weeks, probably. So... Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I love this boss. This boss is so fun. I didn't really get to do him too much back in the day. So, <laughs> I don't know. I always liked them, though. Uh, bye bye. I hope you liked it. And I, I, just trust me, you can do this. Just relax. You, when I, you see me playing Soul Sweat, don't put Soul Sweat. Protection prayers are overpowered. Just, and like whenever you have that on, just debilitate. Like, it's easy. The hardest part about Virago is probably the bleeds. Um, I, I wouldn't stress out too much about Like, if you want to, maybe get the part two and just practice the bleeds. If you feel like you're doing something wrong, teleport out, go back. You, you really just need to get the bleeds down. Get the timing down. Like, you're attacking Virago and you can actually use an ability and escape at the same time so uh, it, it, you know let's go to words retreat fast and i'll show that in in live 
But it's it's very important. Like when you want to do it, like and and then right there when he makes that sound is when you escape. It's like a certain tick, and it's always the same tick. And the same thing with part five. And it's just very important that um, you save your freedom until you absolutely need it because sometimes you might hit him and escape, and you'll get pushed back, and then he'll bleed you again while you're running up. You could also potentially go back, wait a tick, make the bleed go away, then dive back. But again, it makes it complicated. How I did it was very simple. And what I'm talking about is like, say I'm attacking Virago, and he does his bleed right now. You, you want to dive like that. And then go back up to him, and just make sure you have room. Even if you mess up, you're fine. And uh, and again, if you feel like you're messing up the bleeds a lot, you could probably just cheese it and just drink like a Vitality Potion or something. So, yeah. Like, it's not no problem at all. So, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. Bye-bye.